Hello and welcome to another installment of the Knife Coach. Today we're going to be looking at some of the small knife methods using five moves and four elements. Real simple. So I'm going to be using, even though this is on small knife, I'm going to be using a smaller knife later, but I'm going to use a big one so that you can see what I'm doing. So, I'm just going to show you, now most of you, you can look this up on YouTube or probably a hundred places and find out more about the five moves I'm talking about. But what I want you to do is just do a diagonal down and then traverse the same diagonal line back up. So, this would be diagonal slashing. So, go down, come back up. Now go up on the opposite diagonal line and come down like this. So we're going to what's called a cross body cut, shoulder to cross hip, diagonal, and then go back up, load low, go up diagonal, come back down, then go straight in. This will create a cross. Where the cross, the two lines are, is where you thrust at least for the drill. So once more, one, two, three, four, five. Traditionally, you would do them this way. But know that you, wherever your position of play may be, you could load them and do whatever you want, as long as you're using those five elements. The horizontal lines and the vertical lines, they're good too. But we find that the diagonals, the diagonal slashings, have more combative value than the other lines. So this is why we practice them more than others. And it's also why the Cincoteros has a reputation for being a solid, sophisticated, yet simple way of, of defending yourself. So I won't labor this. Just go ahead and practice that just a little bit. and. Uh, Get the idea down that you're not going to be doing a whole bunch of crazy things, but you're going to be doing one or more of those basic elements. If you do that, it reduces your knife fighting down to a very simple matrix. Not a lot of decisions, which is good, and it works as good as anything else. There's hardly anything that you can't deal with with angles one and two. And if you reverse those, that's all we're doing. And that's the truth, those are the basic lines. Um, what I'm going to show you here is a, 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 a palming method that I want you to work on. I'll take this knife and just hold it here so that my hand can hold it. You can see that the point is not protruding past my hand not protruding. So what I want to do is bring that down, bring this down to where, like a slap, the thumb is pinching right at the neck. So if I did those same motions, it would be here. Now you say, what about the thrust? The thrust, your hand rolls like this and you heat hold right here, use the point. It's a very firm grip. So, normally, this is, if your hands aren't used to it, it's like playing guitar. Your fingers and wrist and maybe thumbs will ache for a while because of how you're holding these. Your hands will get stronger later. So when you're, you're starting, okay, you start here. This is the idea. These are hidden. And people say, well, I know you have a knife. That's not the point. It's a psychological aspect. It's a way of behaving or of uh, moving using the edge. If that is a fixed blade and you can do that. With a folder, what happens is you can close the knife on your fingers. So unless it's a lock folder, which I'm really not leaning towards right now, either small fixed blades or no lock on your folder. We're going to look at that next. Well, just about pinching. 
you'll see the pinch grip in the up close, but I'm going to pinch this to where just a little bit of the blade protrudes. Right there, that's all I need. And I'm going to be using the knife here. You can see the handle protrudes back by my wrist. So from here, I want to be able to make the simple lines, horizontal, horizontal, upwards, downwards, just the basic lines of using the point. Most small knives do not have enough edge to do any damage. The short edge just doesn't cut enough or deep enough through a layer of clothing to really provide adequate self-defense. And just like always, if it gets snagged, that folding knife with no lock can close on your finger, hurt you. So your fingers are pinching, they're out of the way. If the knife closes, it closes, it doesn't cut me. So you pinch it, called a pinch grip or a razor style grip. You let the tip protrude and you use that point making what's called taunt wounds. Rapid picking actions, jabbing. And remember the context of this is not to kill anyone, it's to escape. It's to make them back off so that you can get away or get help. So that's all we're using this for. And if you use this method, like I'm showing you, it will go through clothing. It will give you a chance to escape and in the right hands, yes, you could kill with it. But that is not our intent. So I'm going to show you some things that will give you a little bit more of an edge if you had to use such a small knife like this in your defense. So I want to talk about shielding in this next part and show you what a dramatic effect that shielding can have to protect you. So we'll get to that in our next segment. I'm going to show you how to use a shield in your personal defense. That shield could be a briefcase, a bag of groceries, it could be a shirt or jacket you've wrapped around your arm like the old Spanish fighters would use a serape around their hand. When you think of a shield, you don't have to think of a Viking buckler or something like that because you'll never have that. But if you think correctly, you'll have a shield for your defense no matter where you're at in any environment you'll have something that will allow you that one moment to make your move or entry safely without being damaged. A training method to get there. Andy, come on in. Welcome. Um, we're just going to do the triangle thrusting here, the tapping. Collie thrusting triangle. That's all we're doing. This is a nice little exercise to kind of get eye-hand coordination going. I want you to practice that. I probably have that on several of my DVDs. You already know this. So, Practice that one because it's a basis for what we're doing. For example, if I make a move and, and make a pass at him, he can cut that. If we're out here and my live hand isn't watching what it's doing, he's got that one. Or he can even catch it and cut me from there before I could get in. So we know that both hands, he's probably occupied with the, the knife hand of defanging it. But at the same time, if he attracts me here through sniping at this hand, I tend to forget about this, suddenly he lashes out and cuts off the fingers of the live hand. Right. That would be a bad move. So as soon as this situation starts to happen, I'm going to get something like my shirt, take my shirt off. It could be a beach towel or whatever. And you can grab it and then make your roll. That way you'll have hold of it. It's in your hand. So you grab and roll. It's the quickest. Now, this will provide ample protection. Now, again, to keep in the mode of training, we'll go back and do a little bit of thrusting triangle. Because I'm just getting used to using that wad of cloth to stop whatever he's doing. Then, when you go back out to experiment with this, put on your face mask or whatever, use your training knives, get your shield, your serape, and go out and experiment with your partner, what you're going to see is that when you're fighting, if he makes that same pass here, I've got him covered and I'm coming in. No matter what he reacts, I'll be safe. If he makes a pass to where I can suffocate that while he makes this action to me, I'm going to occupy a better target. Because he's coming in to hit me, I can take his shot. I can move right in and do real damage from there. I'm not reduced to he snipes at me, so I snipe at him. We snipe at each other. 
because we're both sort of exposed. Here, I can be bold as sin. If he wants to make a move, it's just bang, right here. And I have him. So it only takes one. Like the old man said, you know, bang, it only takes one. If you rely on having 16 rounds, that's nice, but uh, I'd rather rely on having one round that works every time. It just takes one. Remember this. So this is your one time. Don't waste it by going flubbity dub, whoa, flubbity dub. If he's going to bust that move and aggress on you, then if you bust your move, cut that arm, the face, give him a thrust, get him away. I'm using this because it's a small trainer. If I used this little guy, it's sharper than hell. I don't want to hurt anybody, but at the same time, I worry that you couldn't see it. But this would be what I would be using. So if he came in and hit from here, I jab him. I jab him, he back up, I catch him, I jab him, I jab him again. If that knife comes in, look, these points on these little toothpicks, bang, these bastards hurt. And anything I can do with my big knives, I can do with my little guy here. This just takes a little more training. So remember, pinch grip, serape, no fear in your heart. Five moves, that's all you need if we're here. He comes in, see, boom. Here's the number five move. If he comes in, in here, look, up, down, see, that was what we would say right out of the Cinco Terros. And even if you nip him a little bit, it's okay. You're not trying to kill. What you're trying to do is escape. Okay. Thank you, Andy. I think you get the idea. All right, I want to show you some of where the Kung Fu kind of blends in here in this last segment. We're going to get James in here, and I'll show you how that works.